This is Off Planet Radio. Hey everybody, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer and we have a great show for you today. Uh, here for round two to discuss the numerology of uh, 2020 and the metaphysics of the pyramids, both small and large. Masaki Miyagawa, welcome back to Off Planet Radio. Hey Emily, glad to be back. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, man. We had a really good response to your show last time. Uh, you and I have met. I enjoy you. We have interesting conversations. So we think we know what we're going to talk about today, but it always turns out to be something probably <laughs> totally different. Well. So anyway, um, I want to thank you. Uh, also, I, kn I know many of the listeners have um, are partaking in the use of your tools because some of them, I should meet them places and they're wearing the same things that I'm wearing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So you have some really cool tools. I know you have some new ones. One of the benefits of, of this job is that I get some free samples and Masaki sent me some really cool stuff. He has some cool smart meter stuff, some new pyramids. So we're going to talk about those a little bit here and then we're going to get into some numerology in the first hour and then we'll go deeper into the pyramids in the second hour. So What's going on, man? You got some cool stuff. Yeah, well, you know, most people know me from the p powered, well, pyramids, you know, orgone pyramids. I started out with uh, these kind of pyramids that, well, you know, a lot of your viewers are probably familiar here's with. Here's the little one. I have a big one too, but here's the little one. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it sounds crazy, but just a combination of plastic resin, quartz crystal, uh, metal shavings, and I put shungite in here. A lot of people know shungite, natural EMF shield. Did, yep. you, did, you, did, you, did you always put shungite in, or is that a newer thing you started doing? I started doing it, you know, maybe after a year or two, and I've been okay. doing it for five years, but that yeah. will majorly kick up. It just amplifies the power, yeah. you know, and shungite never needs to be energetically cleaned. Yeah. So that assures that the pyramid will always be strong, but there is a whole range of these energy tools that I think, you know, like everybody has sneakers, they have shoes, right? To yeah. walk around. We have so much electronic pollution now from the smart meters, from the Wi-Fi, from your smartphone. Uh, you, you see people with those uh, Apple AirPods? Oh God, that's the ears. worst. It's like you're giving yourself brain cancer right mm -hmm. there with the Bluetooth, but there's basically so much electronic pollution now that at the basic level, it's affecting people's sleep. Mm -hmm. So if you use some of these tools, you're going to get, you know, full sleep, which leads to, uh, you know, it's just better mood because you're, you're not as tired, fatigued. Yeah. And uh, that, that's a basic factor, but now it's so much, you know, especially we have 5g. If, well, I see 5G pop up on my phone now, on my iPhone in LA. Oh, really? I haven't seen that yet. It, it's probably not like the full signal, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's reading those uh, transmitters. Do you have a newer phone? Yeah, I have uh, the iPhone, uh, is it 10R? Okay, so you have a it's newer like one. I think my, 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 mine probably is not old enough, to, not new enough to pick that up, but yeah, okay. So basically, if you are not using some of these tools, you are just getting hammered. <laughs> so, I mean, everybody kind of knows that computer fatigue. If you've been at the computer all day, you just feel drained. Yeah. That's because these electronic signals and especially Wi-Fi and so forth, uh, it has a chaotic element to it. So, you know, you've talked about how, you know, you've been in the rave scene, going to mm -hmm. parties, electronic music for a long time, me too. So kind of like a, analogy would be if you're in front of the speakers and everything's mm -hmm. dialed in clean sound function one you could basically be there all night be almost like right up against the speakers you're not going to have that ringing that mm -mm. ear fatigue right yeah. but if there's distortion mm -hmm. in somewhere in the djs in the red or the mixing board is you know it's off you want to leave in like five minutes because it's like daggers on your ears right yeah because it's not nice clean sine waves there's mm -hmm. like jaggies distortion right yeah it's basically that kind of concept in uh the emf 
the modern science does not take into account there's like a subtle energy mm -hmm. and if there's a chaotic element that totally hammers your energetic field mm -hmm. and you know everybody's being affected but especially people like your listeners who tend to be intuitives mm -hmm. very sensitive they're even more hammered you know because yeah. the average public when they get hammered they're just like, oh, wow, I got dumber, but I'm still like walking around. But people <laughs> that are, you know, tapped into multi dimensions, it's like you really get pushed down and, you know, uh, you feel it or you, you perceive it a lot more, you know. So, but the great thing is we have tools to um, basically, it doesn't shield out, but what it does is it harmonizes or neutralizes that chaotic element and mm. balances, brings that order, just like a crystal, right? It's like filing ordinary. your jagged fingernail. Yeah, so well, I, had, yeah. I had sent you, I think I had sent you one of these. I have that one. I have this one. So these are uh, tensor tools. They're copper energy tools based on uh, cubits or the measuring lengths they used to use in the megalithic structures like pyramids. And mm -hmm. basically, it creates an etheric frequency that, you know, I used to think these were BS. Like, how could this tool, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's just like copper you can get at the hardware store, You can right? feel it, though. I can even yeah. feel that through the screen. I, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm very, very sensitive. But, like, dude, when I met you for lunch, when we, yeah. uh, Masaki and I met for lunch a couple of months ago, and he comes in and he has a, a box of tools, and they're mm -hmm. sitting on the floor next to me in the restaurant. And I could hardly eat because my body's going <laughs> Because his tools are so strong, and, you know what I mean? And not in a bad way, right? They're, it's not making that, you know, but the strength coming off of them. I mean, there was a couple pyramids in there and there was the tensor rings and whatnot. You can, you can really feel these. Yeah, that one's, an, I, that, I'm jonesing over that one. That one looks cool and is, and I'm sure is super powerful. I can feel it a little bit, yeah. So this, this is a new one, but it's basically, since there's three rings, three different yeah. qubits, it creates a very powerful feel. But let me just, add, we'll cut the BS. You tried some of these tools out. You, yeah. have, you tried the pyramids. You tried these tensor pendants. What do you notice? So um, I'm wearing this now. I used to wear shungite around my neck. Yeah. But I, you know, I've been wearing the shungite for like four or five years. Like, I'm going to try this for a bit. So it does a lot of the same stuff. Like I, I was worried about switching it out because I was so accustomed to the shungite. But uh -huh. I think it accomplishes a lot of the same, a lot of the same stuff. And uh, the, the spirally one that you have, that one is super strong. Like this one is more <laughs> like, I feel like, it, like that, the spiral yeah. one it takes some getting accustomed to, yeah. some getting used to. This just gives a nice sort of balance feeling. I also, and I have no idea, like, I don't think that this was the intended use, but I tend to use things for things sometimes different than they were. What I also love about this is that I can whip it right off my neck and I actually use it to douse for some of my intuitive nutritional right. stuff. And so far it's a hundred percent accurate hits on on the things that uh, are that are going on for people when i suggest when i get an answer and i make a suggestion based on that answer it's it's a 100 percent so far so it obviously is uh very good at picking up it's not giving its own reading it really is reading the subtle energies of their body and my body to determine it's it's great it's sort of, it's basically a way of muscle testing right dowsing so um so that uh with the you just sent me that um the big one for the smart meter. I have to ask you a question about that because my, I don't have a regular smart meter because when they, when they took out our analog meter, I didn't want them to, but the, the air conditioning we had put in the house and we didn't know the slap they put it in will not work with the old analog one. So we had to get a digital meter and supposedly the one I have is a non radio frequency digital meter, but I don't know if I really believe that. So I thought, Oh good. I'll get to put this on too. But there's like some kind of lock key thing from LADWP. Yeah, yeah. Get well, it over that. Well, I mean, basically, uh, so I have a tensor ring. Yeah. For it, it'll work for analog or smart meter because even the the old school analog, uh, mm -hmm. like the electricity that comes into your house, that's dirty too. Yeah. So, so the entire uh, electrical wiring in your house mm -hmm. is dirty energy. But yep. when you put these, now you could put it over the hood, but because like you're saying, there's so much variety of mm -hmm. like, you know, sometimes even the, the housing around the round meter 
Yeah. It, it won't let you allow you to put this totally over it. Yeah. But you, if you have the fuse box, mm -hmm. the electrical panel, you could yeah. put, you could tape this inside the door and close mm -hmm. it. Same thing. So you can. And put what it, if? Mm -hmm. And what if you just like on mine? It won't fit. Like in the picture that you have on your website, it fits yeah. nicely around. Mine is just kind of hanging a little bit because there's something blocking from it for me to be able to snap it on. Right. Well, you could you could tape. You could put tape. If you if it's on the hood, you could put tape on it to hold okay. it there. Yeah, or, but or, it'll or, it'll stay. It's yeah. just not on perfectly centered. Is that okay? That's fine. And, okay. and, you, yeah. and you can uh, also put it inside the fuse box. Okay. So, yeah. Since since you know I have these in my shop, I actually <laughs> I doubled up. I have yeah. one in the fuse box and uh, yeah on the meter. But in short, the tensor tools. There's all kinds. There's pendants. There's a smart meter ring. Uh, you can even you know, put this, I, I told you, right? You can yeah, put under my under, pillow. under your pillow. Yeah. Basically these create a high energy field that yeah. it's protection. But the side benefit is, is it actually bumps up your psychic power. Yeah. It bit bumps up your frequency, right? Yeah. The, uh, the, and I also appreciate that they look nice, right? A lot yeah. of the things that they create for people to wear, it's like, Ooh, I'm not wearing that. Uh, these look nice. They look cool. People ask me about them. You know, um, also the pyramids. So you sent me a pyramid. I mean, at this point, I have two large pyramids on either side of our bed. And then there's also a small pyramid. So we have three pyramids around the bed. And I have insane dreams every night. <laughs> <laughs> well, but these are not the, yeah. like, like, I used to get the synthetic dreams when I first got the 5G router, right? I would get these dreams that, like, felt inserted or synthetic. Mm -hmm. So I started unplugging that. So I sleep with the router and the internet, the modem unplugged, but these are just like crazy dreams, but they're, they're fun for the most part. It's just sort of like theater of the absurd. So it, I find it amusing and entertaining, but it, it, it doesn't feel like it's the crap being generated by negative frequencies, but it definitely just the other day you sent another pyramid. And when I added the other pyramid, the crazy dreams seem to have ramped up a notch. <laughs> well, Emily, so this is a thing, right? <laughs> The more you ramp your frequency up, yeah. The more all your, uh, I guess, metaphysical powers are boosted because it's like you're going up to another bandwidth, right? Yeah. Now you have the non-powered pyramid. Yeah. It's just like this, it's basically like a sculpture with the yeah. Energy, right. Yeah, I have a but, black one with silver. I have the gold one with silver, and I have the small gold one. With but silver. what do you think happens, Emily? Yeah. You have a powered pyramid. Now I think I showed wow. the last time. Yeah. Now I, this is, it's basically the same thing, but with a, when it, you have a higher slope, yep. you look at this, it's much more. I can intense. feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it through the screen. Yeah. And guys, that's not a lifesaver in there. That's a <laughs> Rodan coil. So, you know, I'm, I, I'm running uh 432 Hertz right now. Yeah. And let me tell you, not subtle, but I like it. Cause it's uh, I'm Scorpio like an intense. I have a question. Have you at all experimented with, combining this with your dj sets not with dj sets but uh anything that has an energetic component so mm -hmm. say acupuncture mm -hmm. body yeah. work body work massage yeah, yeah. uh meditation uh manifestation boosting mm -hmm. thought forms it, this is basically like a carrier wave or a, a helping hand that will majorly boost anything you're doing yeah so uh you could use it for that but you know you could i mean i, I think yeah. i've always thought it'd be cool i mean you know there's so much weird crap at parties right uh. that sort of if you kind of not only through the music you're playing but also just uh -huh. through the energy the energetic frequency background like could really take control uh -huh. over you know the uh vibration level of your of the party that would be kind of interesting you see how that affects people's perception of what i have sorry i have like a little fly or something in my room here um, well, I have a buddy in the Bay, DJ Audi One shouts. He's like a full time DJ, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I've given him a bunch of the pendants mm -hmm. just because he's out every night basically. So yeah, he's I, I wanted he's trying to get him all the time. Yeah, I, I I wanted feedback, and now this is anecdotal, right? It's not mm -hmm. scientific study, but he says that he gets less weirdos <laughs> coming up yeah. to him. Because, yeah, because a lot of times. Uh, well, it could be just, it could be two things. It could just be that low 
energy people that are either drunk or they're on drugs, it's like they subconsciously do not want to be around you when your energy is that high. Yeah. But also, you know, some of these people have entities working through them. Totally. And, and it's the same thing. The, the bad guys, low energy does not mm -hmm. like high energy. Well, I'm just thinking about, you know, like, I, I like a certain kind of aesthetic at some of the parties. Some of the parties I go to have not only great music and sound, but some of them have a certain aesthetic. And I'm thinking I've seen some of the pictures of your uh, pyramids in the dark with them lit up. You know what I mean? Like it, it could actually create a really cool aesthetic on the stage visually. And then you're running frequencies in the background aside from music. It could actually, it would be really interesting to see all the vampires clear from the floor basically, because you know, we do know that there's a, a, mm -hmm. a I'd, I'd say that mm, five, depending on uh, where and when and what's going on, I'd say between five and 35% of the people at parties are not human in the same way you and I are. <laughs> There's all sorts of stuff that shows up. And some of them are not necessarily super nefarious or harmful. Some of them, some of it, it's, there's just nothing there. There's empty vessels that other things come through, you know? Um, but it would be interesting to see who's scattered if you did that. I, I just, I think it'd be cool to try sometime. <laughs> well, you know, we'll, we're about to get into it, but this is the time of application. Yeah. Because, or going active, or I know that you're, you are going to be at Robert Phoenix's, uh, uh, he's having a gathering down in Texas, right? Yeah, I'll be there, yeah. So it's basically, you know, a lot of us have been looking at us for 10, 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. We've accumulated the information. We've kind of like mapped out the playing board. We kind of felt out the edges of the cage of the 3D Saturn matrix. Mm -hmm. But now's the time of application. Uh, so, you know, using the energy tools, this is the time to do it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you heard him kind of reference it. For those who don't know, uh, Masaki is also a very practiced numerologist. Uh, he does numerology readings for people and he's created a new article. It's up on his Patreon page, which is, is that Patreon, Patreon.com forward slash Akeda or Masaki Miyagawa? Pyramid, power pyramid. Pyramid, pyramid power. power. Pyramid, pyramid power. power. So you Patreon. guys can go there and he's posted the article for free because he feels it's important but you guys can also support him there and he does all sorts of interesting tutorials and and videos and things like that there but uh he wrote a pretty good article and i got a chance to read it the other day so we're going to kind of go through some of that and talk about some of the possibilities of 2020. so uh what kind of possessed you to write the article right now and uh, it's a little early for it's a little earlier than most people are starting their 2020 predictions but you're on it and right. i have to say um I agree with you and I agree with your, uh, I think in some ways we're already in this, it's already started, yes. right? And um, I do think that like, uh, you know, we've heard some of this stuff before, obviously in 2012 and year 2000 and things like this, right? Some of these mm -hmm. same kinds of ideas, but there's something different about it this time. But I think part of the reason there was like a big nothing in 2000 and 2012 because people were waiting for some like really big, obvious, in your face, no choices about it, like whatever kind of collective thing. And I think now most of us have become more refined in our under perception mm -hmm. of what the end of the world or the changing of the guard or any of these terms that like are mean and that it's a, it, it's a more subtle thing. You have to really be able to look in between the spaces to notice it. And also that it really depends, um, you know, an economic crash doesn't, it can, can also be like a wave. You can surf it or you can let it hit you and wash it's it. A, to it's, a, it's a transformation. Yeah. I, I would say that, you know, uh, especially 2012, mm -hmm. where you could say people were expecting 2000, but maybe 9 11 and 2001. That was a big mm -hmm. shift at that time. Yeah. But to me, 2001 and 2012. Mm -hmm. It was like a door closed. We, we passed a certain marker and a door yes. closed. Mm -hmm. But now it's like we're on the roller coaster or the rocket ship and it's going to take off next year. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so, so let's, let's get into it. Okay. So uh, my main method of reading is numerology. So there's many methods of reading. Tarot, uh, Robert Phoenix does astrology. Um, it doesn't really matter which method you use. It's just that if you're practiced enough and it's a legitimate system, no matter what system you use, you're going to get similar answers. It's just yeah. look, looking at the reality from different angles, right? So yeah. 
I use numerology and numerology is the esoteric study of numbers. And through time, it just became known that certain numbers are connected to certain archetypes or personality types, or, you know, you can even overlay this connect numbers to planets, mm -hmm. to astrological signs. So most simple would be like number one is the alpha. It's like the, the sun, right? Number two is like moon. It's more subconscious. It's the mm -hmm. feminine. So these archetypes are embedded throughout our reality. Mm -hmm. And just from a name or a birthday, you can extract or get information because a name with alphabetic letters or a birthday, which is made in numbers, mm -hmm. encoded in it is, it's like a holographic encoding of the personality or the meaning just below the surface. So next year is 2020, right? Mm -hmm. There is a global year count that goes one to nine and it recycles one to nine and one to nine. So 2020, it's 2020, right? So we have 2020, it's two and two, which combines to what, four. Now, what is four? And this is not uh, from the most popular uh, numerology, which is Pythagorean. I added another set after many years of doing numerology, which is the Chaldean numerology, and then you can start to connect to planets, okay? okay? Four is connected to Aquarius Uranus energy. And, you know, there's always been this talk from the 60s, you know, that uh, we're entering the age of Aquarius. Well, guess what? That energy is going to be the theme of 2020. And so what is Aquarius Uranus energy? Well, it's basically a revolution, transformation, rebellion, and chaos. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the article, I referenced Trump because mm -hmm. Trump, although he's a Gemini, right? You have the, the, the right wing and the left wing in America looking at his two faces and we're living in two different realities, right? Yeah. He's that Gemini, just like Kanye West is yeah. a Gemini, but Trump has a lot of so-called Uranian energy, which mm -hmm. is basically overturning, right? Mm -hmm. from, the, from the day Trump got in, you know, Obama, whatever you think about him, on the surface, America was relatively, it was like business as usual, right? Mm -hmm. The minute Trump gets in, it's like everything's out the box. All those hidden things yeah. well, were that's, sh shaken up. That's what's so fascinating is, and this is where like, it's so interesting the way people can be controlled through perception and media and ideas and stuff like that. Really, there's not that much that has changed uh, policy-wise, or even uh, in terms of how things have taken action for Trump, you know, when all this chaos, all this brouhaha is happening about there's children in cages at the border, those pictures were actually taken during the Obama administration. And they were policies right. that had been passed by Trump and Obama, that Trump was just doing the same That's thing right. that they were doing. But so, like, you're right, on the surface, Obama was very, like, he's a smooth talker, right? It's like, you yep. feel very calm and chill and whatever, because he's putting everybody to sleep with his NLP when he talks and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And Trump comes in and he's just, you know, it's like a bull in a china shop, right? But nothing substantially has changed. He hasn't started any new wars, right? He, like everybody talks like he's this like crazy. I mean, now this thing that's going on possibly with Iran and with Saudi Arabia and stuff, but ultimately he hasn't expanded any of the wars that Obama started. Right. He, in terms of these, what they're saying he are racist policies of his, he's just enforcing policies that were passed by other presidents and that somehow weren't racist when others did them, but that are now racist when he does them, you know, and, you know, even things that some people don't like, like he, you know, stopped the Obamacare tax. You can still have Obamacare if you want it. It's just not being forced on people the way it was being forced before. So substantially nothing much has changed. The only thing that's really changed is rhetoric the way things are talked well, about. Well, it's the people's perception of yeah. what's going on. And basically, I think you know that America has been hollowed out for decades. Yep. The only thing holding America together is people's belief in the mm -hmm. system. Yeah, totally, the, totally. The, totally. the yeah. belief. So this is the thing, because now we've been through two years of uh, Trump, right? Right. So, or is it, is it, 
Yeah, you know, it's four, four years, four years, right? We're, we're well, like no, three, yeah, we're like two, three years. And two, and a half, two and a half, two and a half. They, he won in November of 2016, but they right. don't inaugurate them until January. So it's a little over two and a half years. Right. We're a year and a half out from the election. So, so much has quote unquote been exposed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whether, because it, it's like the so-called right wing got woke, right? Mm-hmm. But the left wing got woke on certain things too. But mm-hmm. basically all these things have come out and the only glue that was holding America together mm-hmm. was the thought form or the belief in the system. Mm-hmm. I think that's been broken down enough now to where it's just going to take one, you know, in the economics, they call the black swan events. Yeah. That, that one trigger that's going to blow the whole thing up. Well, it's the same. It's kind of like, yeah. and I don't know if Americans are going to have to go through this or just witness it someone else. This whole thing going on in England with Brexit, the people voted for Brexit and it's been all these two years now and they still don't have it. And they're keeping, they keep trying to, you know, change it and say, oh, the people didn't really want that. You know, I don't believe in democracy either, but people, the England and the United States supposedly have democracy, right? So if the people choose something, that's what's supposed to happen. So it, it what, what happens in England and how not only uh, those people respond to it, but how people here view that will determine whether we actually have to have something like that happen here or not. You and I both know what the answer is going to be. Um, you know, there is going to have to be a black swan event here because, you know, people here are just complacent and not worried about something unless it's happening to them. You know, like as long as someone else is being spied on, as long as someone else is being censored, as long as someone else, you know, whatever. Here, the Americans really seem to have to uh, experience something to, to take the lesson. I mean, maybe that's a human trait in general, but. So, you know, Trump, he's going to, you know, end up his first term. I, I think probably unless something, of course, again, my, my reading is basically, I said, expect the unexpected. Mm-hmm. So I kind of expect Trump to win, but yep. we're, we're probably going to start some big economic changes next year, a lot mm-hmm. of changes. So anything could happen. But even if he gets reelected, which I kind of. I think he's going to. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't really matter because this whole thing is going to change. Mm-hmm. I think no matter who gets in, we're so far out on a limb and the changes need to happen. They are going to happen mm-hmm. that I think it benefits people more to start looking internally, yep. be, be reflective, and then start preparing instead of burning up all their energy over the above Absolutely. situation. I, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm a voluntarist or anarchist. I have been for quite a long time now. I don't vote. I, I, I observe the political system because we still have to live here with these people who believe in it. You know, you and I no longer believe in the system. So if it was just, if, you know, if you and I comprised all of humanity, the system would have collapsed a long time ago, right? But we live here with people who do. So it's interesting to observe and to watch how things go. And, you know, I, I enjoy to, you know, Robert and I enjoy commenting on it on Matrix Match and whatever. But no, I agree with you. Um, there is no, uh, when I stopped having an emotional investment in the politics and started Mm -hmm. just only worrying about the things that I could actually change for myself. It doesn't matter like that. I mean, if I don't open my computer, if I don't open the TV, that stuff exists. Yeah. Well, well, I think uh, that it benefits you to be Mm non-reactive. And I, that's not to say that don't care, but non-reactive is just take a little bit step back and observe the situation before going to the emotion because a lot of people they're very reactive and they're being activated by their you know you know emotional base adrenochrome that that, 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 that goes for right wing and left wing although uh-huh. typically people are looking at the sjws and so forth but it goes for everybody totally because there's going to be okay so 2020 two and two is four Four is Aquarius Uranus energy, which is basically the tr- uh, uh, you could call it the Trump effect, where one thing little hat one he touches he he pushes the tweet button, and then the whole oh. world goes crazy. Boom! Right. Yeah. So he doesn't even he doesn't even need to have the nuclear football. He just pushes right. tweet, and then the same thing happens. Yeah. He, he's he's probably eating a Big Mac half asleep. He puts out Kofefe, and people <laughs> are like who are like, what does this mean? Right. So uh, expect the unexpected in 2020. And I would say that probably you are not going to have time to think like we're doing now where you have time to analyze and everything. Mm-hmm. Because look at the, the time scale. Whereas 
you used to have maybe one or two big events in a year. Then it became one or two big events a month. And now there's like an event a week or every couple of days. It's going to be nonstop events. It's going to be an event every hour, every day, all the time. Everything's happening. Everything is happening all the time. The other thing I think is that it's already been, I don't know, you know, uh, 10 years ago, I, I used to listen to podcasts and consume information all day long. Now I probably consume information maybe an hour a day, right? Mm -hmm. So, but the more uh, action you're actually taking, like doing stuff internally, taking, you know, doing your things, making your tools, doing, you know, the work that I'm doing, whatever, there's less time for doing that. And also it's happening at a pace that it's like, not only can you not keep up, but why would you want to pay well, attention I, to every single thing that's happening? I, I think this plays into also that I think like you said, many people have said that the we might have even mentioned it in the last time I was on. I personally feel that the, the time for a lot of the investigation is over, over in 2012. Yeah. And people should have been uh, starting to do their self-healing, self-work, self-improvement. Yeah. And also, it's not a joke to say that you probably will not even be able to look these things up in the near future. Mm -hmm. It's because, already happening. Because things are being wiped from yeah. the internet, right? Uh, so I gave some bullet points for 2020 connected to this number four, which represents, it's basically change. It's Aquarius Uranus energy. So uh, the global economic reset will probably start next year. Uh, because now if you look at this from the astrological point of view, the Saturn Pluto conjunction is, I think it happens January 12th in Capricorn. So that's only a couple months out. Mm -hmm. That's why I put this out now. So people can have time to think before everything starts really rocking and rolling. So, you know, I would just start preparing or be at least mentally prepared because a lot of people, they don't have the economic means to do a lot of preparation in that way. But what I think should people should factor in is, are you spiritually prepared? Yeah. Are, are you fit. How's your spiritual fitness? Yeah. Because, you know, Americans, it, w w this country was a country of plenty and bounty for decades. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think people are still thinking if I have, you know, like uh, that gravelly voiced uh, guy down in Texas, you have six months of dried food. You could yeah. have all the dried food, the, the guns and bullets you want. Yeah. But if you're not mentally strong and spiritually strong, it doesn't matter, right? It's, it's totally. So uh, global economic reset and then political turmoil next year. Just, as well. wait, wait, real quick, mm -hmm. uh, what, do you have any thoughts on what that might look like? What, when we sit, we've been talking about an economic crisis or uh, an economic reset for a really long time now. Right. Um, and I think people are thinking of like, uh, you know, the traditional like Great Depression or even what the 2008 one looked like. This is going to be different no matter what because of the fact that we now have cryptocurrencies, which weren't a factor the last time. Right. So, and, so, so we have more alternative currency and, uh, People, uh, you know, like some of the some of the sort of scams that were used to create the bubbles that created the crash last time. People are maybe slightly more hip to, and so have a little bit more have done a little bit of shifting in terms of making sure that things are what they think they are. Not everybody. So, what do you think this crisis slash reset? You have any thoughts on what it may look like? Like what? What I I think. Well, you know, I've gone back and forth between Brazil and LA for you know over ten years, mm -hmm. and Latin America and Brazil is you know Argentina and Brazil. They're famous countries of of you know boom and bust. Yeah. Right. So typical things that happen in a collapsed economy is uh, imported things become more difficult to get. Mm -hmm. So that that was one of my suggestions. Because I said, you know, I'm not an economic advisor, but these are the things personally that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of them is be mentally prepared. I said, start paying down debt. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the means, you might want to pick up some gold and silver. And that's not in an IRA or some far off place. That's like in your, in your, pos in your possession, yeah. right? Uh, you know, possibly look into cryptocurrency. I know Randy's not into it, but... You know, it is, I think, a fa even if this is a control mechanism, uh -huh. 
I think it might be something that people might want to look into. It's highly risky. Well, it, 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 just, it, just the fact that, you know, and Randy, Randy has been critical of it. You know, yeah. on this show, we've talked about yeah. cryptocurrency a lot more from a metaphysical perspective, yeah. but you know, we do this series of shows with Jeff. We've had Cliff high on a while ago. He seems to have gone completely off the reservation with some of the stuff. I, I, I personally, I like Cliff, but I don't agree with a lot of the things he says, you know? Um, but, uh, just one of the things about Cliff's work was it's based on people's emotional responses to things. Mm -hmm. And I think on, there is some truth to that. Maybe he was reading it incorrectly or intentionally or unintentionally or whatever, but just the fact that people get so upset one way or the other about cryptocurrency, right? You have people who are just like, it's the best thing in the world. And if you don't agree with me, you're fucking, you know, you're a shill. It's the, the triggered, other people, triggered, triggered. Yeah, another, you have other people who are like, this is the AI takeover. This is the singularity. Well, if you don't agree see, with me, you're, you're whatever. And what, then you have other people who are just like, you know, it, 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 so for me, I'm kind of in the middle. I have a little bit of it. I'd never check it. I'm not really concerned with it. I'm what? not anti, I'm not pro. But the fact that so many people are so emotional about mm -hmm. it tells me that it is going to be central to whatever happens. I, 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 I would say this, you know, we're using, we're both in, the, in LA, we're in the US, we're using this, these uh, Federal Reserve notes, right? Mm -hmm. That's a bunch of crap, but, bunch of crap. It, but, it's, but it's, a, it's a medium but it's of crap. But people are used to the smell of that crap. And now, <laughs> you know, these cryptocurrencies are going to come in. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's definitely the tentacles of the establishment are in there. And this represents, because we were talking about, you know, in general, we're moving into the Aquarian energies. Aquarius is the air sign. If even if you look at the astrological symbol of Aquarius, it looks like waves. It almost looks like a Wi-Fi symbol, right? Mm -hmm. So everything is becoming abstracted, just like in the electronic music uh, DJ mm -hmm. scene. It yeah. used to be the vinyl, right? Yeah. Back in the day, we had the cassette mixtape. Mm -hmm. You literally could not find this obscure, cool music unless you went to the sources. You had to know the DJs. You had to go to the parties. You probably couldn't even, I mean, you know, the younger people today probably can't even imagine this, but you could not hear this music on the radio. You couldn't hear it out. Uh, the mainstream stores, when you had to go physically buy CDs or tapes, wouldn't have it. Mm -hmm. You had to seek it out. You even yeah. you, you even had to know somebody to get invited to the party and then go to three or four map points to, right. to actually find right. where the party really was. And then, yeah. then the digital era came in. So it becomes abstracted, right? It's no longer on the vinyl. It's in MP3. And now, now I don't know if you know this, Emily, the, a lot of the DJ controllers, mm -hmm. they're pulling the songs from the cloud. I know. It's not even on... It's not even, you know, it used to be CDJ, then it was the USB memory stick. Yeah. Now a lot of the controllers is pulling it from the cloud. So that's abstraction, right? Yep. That's a little Aquarian concept of mm -hmm. it becomes abstracted, abstracted until it's just like in the ether, right? Mm -hmm. So same with money. So the money, it went from, you know, where it is fiat, but you literally have a paper dollar in your hand, right? Mm -hmm. then we're already halfway there with the debit cards and credit cards, but then yeah. it becomes cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. So to me, uh, it's just the way things are going to go. Mm -hmm. It could have a, like a more benevolent side. And mm -hmm. it, there's definitely the control factor because everything will be on the blockchain, blockchain tracked and traced. Right. But I think, no matter what you think about it, you should become familiar with it because this mm -hmm. is going to be the mode of operation that's going to come in. And I think, well, you know, I, people can go check out the article on my Patreon. It's uh, pyramid power on Patreon. But I said that, you know, cause I broke down basically 2020 is for it's Aquarius Uranus energy. So expect the unexpected It's going to be basically chaotic. You're going to have revolutions, possibly even riots in the street because what is 2020 but the election year right because mm -hmm. it'll be the last year of the first term of trump right mm -hmm. and then uh it's look at what's been going on it's so balkanized right and people i think it it could come to the point where we see riots in the streets 
And what is that but the sign of Aquarius, which rules revolutions, the rebel. It's also the sign of, you know, Lucifer. Yeah. So, right? Because he's the one that- The, 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 his, the original yeah. revolutionary, the original it's rebel. It's Saul, yeah. Saul Linsky revolution, yeah. literally. Yeah. So uh, open rebellion, riots in the streets, and it could even be overturning the earth, right? Earth changes. Mm -hmm. So across the board, uh, things could get very weird. And you know, uh, Aquarius, if you know Aquarian people, a lot of them are the scientists. They work with the computers, with technology, and they're into future science, right? Aquarius rules even aliens. So we could see an uptick in UFO paranormal activity next year. And uh, I don't know if you know this festival in, Cro I think it's Croatia. It's an Outlook Festival. So a mm -hmm. giant uh, music festival, right? Okay. I had two reports of separate people that do not know each other. One guy is Croatian mm -hmm. and he sent me a video. He's like, bro, what's this? And it was definitely a UFO. He's yeah. from Croatia and he, he said, this is something, right? I got another report of a guy that was at the festival and he said at nighttime, he's like, man, I'm looking up at the stars and I see ships shooting at each other. Mm -hmm. And this is a guy that's not into this stuff. Yeah. So I think that, you know, this has been going on and this is a bell curve. It doesn't just start next year. It's a bell curve, right? Yeah. But you, I think you're going to see uptick in basically great change. Right. And, uh, this all overlaps because we were talking so much about the cryptocurrency, the economic stuff, looking at it from the numerology view four, right? Which is Aquarius Uranus energy, but we have a transit or a trend Uranus and Taurus in the astrological sense, Uranus, you know, Uranus is Aquarius energy. It's that change transformation overturning Taurus it's the bull of wall street it's economy so mm -hmm. transformation of economy cryptocurrency economic mm -hmm. global economic reset right yeah so again tying it back to just looking at other countries that have uh economic you know collapses or great changes we in the west are used to getting anything we want at any time yeah. uh, i was i was just at the supermarket the other day looking you know at the liquor section like how much choice you have of anything you yeah know? You, you can get anything you want amazon you get it the next day sometimes the same day you yeah. get anything you want it, I, I i swear to god one time i hadn't even pushed the order button yet and they were knocking <laughs> at the front door they already had it here yeah so you know you're just gonna have to accept that you may not be able to get everything you want and if you can get mm -hmm. it it may be more expensive so one of my suggestions was besides all the other economic preparation like paying down debt keeping cash on the side, don't keep too much in the bank and so forth. If there's some big ticket items or things that are, you know, very specialized, because we know a lot of DJs and that kind of stuff. Yeah. If you want some kind of electronic equipment or things that are imported, you may want to get them yeah. now because, you know, when I'm down in Brazil, DJ equipment is expensive because the average person doesn't need it so it's a very specialized imported item and they can mark it up as much as they want I and mean, even just some of the things people some of this i know people who take supplements that are not readily available here in yeah. this country or use things like shungite that takes already takes a little bit of time to get here from siberia if you're getting decent stuff and whatnot so any of these things that we now you know we've all had that situation where a supplement we took for a long time always had no trouble getting it suddenly it's on back order you can't get it anymore it's a, it's a big problem so and that doesn't even necessarily having to do with economics. It's just supply uh, with the, if things are going to be expensive, you know, obviously we're already partially into a tariff war with China um, mm -hmm. and we get so much cheap plastic crap from China here already. So the prices are going to go up based on that, but there are going to be some, I mean, that is going to be how war is waged is by not letting people have things mm -hmm. on a certain level. So, and you know, also, uh, Things basically get more restricted, and I'll mm -hmm. go into that in a second, but restriction is a theme of this, this next coming year in 2020 also. So typically, like in Latin America, uh, they put exchange controls. They basically, the borders go down So because they, they don't want the capital leaving the country. Right. So, so you can only take out so much from the bank every day or maybe even a month, and you will not 
you know, if it gets serious, you will not be able to take your money out of the country. And so, you know, just ba basic things that people should do, like get your passport, man. Like if you're a, U if you're a U.S. citizen, yeah. you should get your passport because in past times when people had to leave a country, sometimes they almost had, you know, we always hear the story, I had a nickel in my pocket or something. But if you have that passport, that's your ticket to leave if you need to. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I, you know, I don't want to put this in a sense where like, oh, it's all going to be bad. Yeah. But I think, you know, expect the unexpected. So if you have all your ducks in a row, if something does happen, then you're like, okay, well, I've prepared. So I have more options, you know? So, uh, yeah, one of the things about 2020 is so the, I was saying the traditional year count goes one to nine and back one to nine, right? But I literally see like 2020, two, zero, two, zero. I see 22. Mm -hmm. And so this is what they call a master number. It's a special set because usually it goes one to nine, but the 22 is an aspect of uh, 11. Right. And 11 is a supercharged too. It's like super moon energy, right? Yeah. But uh, we know the Freemasons very much into these like uh, 11, 22, 33, all that stuff. Yeah. The, the, the so called Gematria, Gematria, the Gematria. Kabbalistic, Quebec Kabbalistic calculations and things yep. like that. But 22, they call the master builder. So it, the idea is basically taking a concept, a next level idea. It could be even like a spiritual or an other dimensional idea. Mm -hmm. And then through that Saturn progression of the foundational bricklaying, just putting in the parts step by step, right? Yep. Over a period of months or even years, a great project or the great work is completed. Yeah. So I think that 20, uh, 2020 could be the beginning of, again, a great shift, a great change that we have not seen before and that would make sense right because if you want to create a new structure you have to blow up the old one right okay. you, you have to shake it up and then you pre reposition the pieces how you want right yeah so there's that i see that in 2020 that uh through this change through this reorganization of the system a new system is going to begin to come in but see you should look at at, at it as i can do this too right it's time for people to take responsibility and start bettering yourself because yeah. you, you could be the master builder and say like, you know what? It really is time for me to start taking responsibility and doing things that I want to do. And I said, find your tribe, Aqu Aquarius, right? Don't go with the crowd, go, f you know, the beat of your own drum. Find mm -hmm. the like-minded people that you want to interface with, right? You create what you want. Don't just be subject yep. to the, because all, all these things, there's two aspects. There's a higher aspect and a lower one. The higher one would be like higher mentation, right? Uh, work the frequencies with uh, the energy tools, right? Uh, connect with the people that are of a like mind. And then the lower aspect it's also the group because Aquarius is a group mind, right? But it's that hive AI mind. It's both are the same concept, but one's yeah. organic and one's digital. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And um, so this uh, 22 master builder, they also call control or be controlled. So since I just brought it up, anybody that's born on the 22nd of the month, this would apply to you also. Huh? But okay. uh, they call control or be controlled. So if you do not take charge and be in control of your own life, yeah, other people will try to control you. And this really plays in because this is just looking at the numerology angle, right? Yeah. But this totally plays into what Robert Phoenix talks about with this whole like uh, Saturn Pluto conjunction with the whole Capricornian energies, right? Which is what? Saturn is restriction. Mm -hmm. And the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which starts uh, in Capricorn on January 12, 2020, so it's just a couple months out, that's going to start a lot of things. But I think 2020 will be a peak of restriction and censorship, which it would make sense because you're going to have these economic things, which is going to piss people off. There's probably going to be riots in the streets. 
this is a whole election cycle. They're not going to be like, look what, ha- what happened to people like Alex Jones and so forth, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of others. There's been a lot of channels start, starting to disappear, right? Yeah. Peak of restriction. That, but, that YouTube is, is not nearly as fun and interesting as it was six, seven, eight years ago. Which is okay yeah. if, if you understand that this is like reading the, the weather. It's, the it's, weather actually, report. it's actually also a gift because we all spent so much time on YouTube when it was interesting and now it's really time for doing instead of watching and listening and all that yeah. kind of stuff. The other thing I'm thinking as you're sitting here talking about 2020 and Master Builder and Scene 22, I also think of like the way 2020 is used metaphorically in our culture with 2020 vision, which is seeing things clearly, which is hindsight is 2020. So what you're saying here is, you know, this is what we see coming. You, if you look at it now, that you know, it's clear what's going on. You don't want to be on the other side of it going, oh, if I had done it back then, right? When we, in hindsight, it's going to be, oh, clearly what we should have done. So right now you're giving us sort of a preview, but it is interesting. We use 2020 to refer to seeing clearly, right? Or perfect vision. Sure. Right. And so I, symbolically it could be, I mean, this is a chance where you could actually perfect your vision, right? Like whatever I, I, project you're, uh, whatever spiritual, metaphysical, healing, interesting, you know, growth kind of project that you've always dreamt of. If you start working on it now, you could really build it into exactly what you want it to be. I think is something you're saying in this article. Yeah, I think that uh, especially for, you know, listeners and viewers of Off Planet Radio, you've been into this for a while. Mm-hmm. And so I think that if you haven't been, because I know a lot of your listeners, they're practitioners in their own right. But mm-hmm. I look at myself, there was a point where I had been absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. And then I started manifesting, mm-hmm. right? Because we talked about before in the last show about yeah. there's a point where you become active mm-hmm. right it's like that's the whole thing of the age of aquarius also is age of pisces is i believe mm-hmm. age of aquarius is i know so well, you you mm-hmm. become the magician the only yeah. factor is you since it's on you you can't blame the priest or the patriarchal father or the government yeah. now you are the magician so it's yeah. on you but do you have the wisdom to do, to, do you know the ramifications of what you're doing? The other thing you said a second ago was about control or be controlled, right? Once mm-hmm. you become quote unquote activated, are you going to be activated as an agent of the system or are you going to be activating your own mind, your own divinity, your own ability to create and control something? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically taking responsibility because, mm-hmm. okay, next year, the, <laughs> you know, Trump, Trump Tower, the Tower card. Mm-hmm. He, he's like, though, he, Trump is like judgment, that, that tower card in the tarot. Yeah. This is judgment. And the whole thing's about to be blown up. But I mentioned in the article that, you know, this number four, now 2020, right? Two and two is four. In the East Asian cultures, four is kind of a taboo number. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, well, in Japanese, it has two pronunciations. They call it uh, yon. It's ichi ni. San Yon, right? Where they say she, but they, sometimes they say Yon because she sounds like death, right? It has, it's funny because it has two pronunciations, Yon and she. Okay. But, but in Chinese too, the, the pronunci- pronunciation, this is Yi uh, Er San Si, the four, it sounds like death. But what is change, right? Because four is that, that change. It's the uh, Aquarius Uranus energy. What is a loss of a job or change of career mm-hmm. or uh, a breakup of a relationship. That's a death. Yeah. But in the death, there's a rebirth. So th- the whole thing is really going to visibly, cause it's been changing. You think of where it's we been were changing. Yeah. You can see where we were when the day Trump got into now, America is not mm-hmm. the same. It's, it's different and yeah. it's going to change even more, but it's going to, People have been able to kind of go along and not really be impacted that much in their daily life. Mm-hmm. But then economic change, right? Yeah. And then uh, like in France, the Yellow Vest, they've been, you know. They're still like, going, aren't they? It's like 40, 50 weeks or something, right? Yeah. That kind of thing will really <laughs> start to make people think. So, uh yeah, it's just, you know, that's why I'm telling people 
just keep this in mind, you know, so you can start preparing. But then also, in any great change economically, mm -hmm. like if you go from here and you drop down to here or you go up, right? This is an exchange of energy. Yeah. So even though a lot of people could be economically crushed, there will be fortunes made also. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to think when things are changing so much, if you find that niche, you could basically become a millionaire or something like that. And it's not going to be everybody, but there are people out there because it could even be out of the need to survive. They fill certain gaps and they create certain businesses that prosper in this time. And I'll tell you that one of the industries or areas that will do very well will be metaphysics, mm -hmm. uh, readers like astrological, tarot, numerology, the esoteric field. Uh, also, you know, I'm sure you've seen a lot of flyers or things going on in town. The, sa the sound bath, right? Mm -hmm. the, the toning, healing, meditation. Yeah. This will be a growing field because this overlaps with these kind of Aquarian themes. You know? yeah. Well, and then I think also the field of healing and completely uh, uh, non-traditional types of, some very traditional, like uh, indigenous kind of tradition, but also, you know, people coming up with new and interesting modalities and combinations of skills that they've picked up that are traditional and, and stuff. It's kind of a, a combination of healing and art, right? Like, which is what you do. You do a combination of healing and art. Some kind of lends into some of the things that I'm starting to do. I think there's going to be a huge opportunity for that too, because people are needing something that is different than what the system has always provided. And if they can find something that helps them to feel better, not only physically, but on these other levels that haven't been so thought of before is important, at least in the West, on all these metaphysical levels and, and, and energetic levels and whatnot, that's something people are willing to pay for. Yeah, and just on a practical basis, when people, I mean, this kind of happened in the 2007, 2008 with the subprime crisis, mm -hmm. but when people are out of work and mm -hmm. things are, you know, their life is upside down, mm -hmm. they're asking questions because they're yeah. like, uh, what, whatever I'm doing is not working. So there's gonna be people looking for advice yeah and you know i see it all the time so it this is something that you know if you've this is an example if you have been kind of an amateur reader you may mm -hmm. want to start you know that could be your next business mm -hmm. you know so yeah. uh and you know for me like the numerology it was an interest that turned into a business i added yeah. it to my business so you know. yeah yeah, I mean, we all have little things we do to ourselves for ourselves that we think of as just something we do as part of our self care. But people ask you about that. How come this? You always look like you feel so good, or how come this? You know, whatever. How how do you always know what I'm going to say before I say it? And blah blah blah. Um, you know, people if they're if they're asking you the question, it's because they're interested. So don't be afraid to make work of that. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say this also that uh, you could all boil this down to knowing yourself, right? Because mm -hmm. we talked about self-work, yeah. balancing yourself. And uh, the more, whether you get into like healing work mm -hmm. or you get into esoteric reading, you actually, even though you're working with people, you get to know yourself more because it's, yeah. it's a funny thing. <laughs> I don't know why, but when you're working with people, say consulting or healing work or doing readings, these people mirror the stuff that you have. Totally. So it's like, uh, it's you, you're helping people, but then you, you're actually helping yourself at the same time. Cause you say, Oh, this, <laughs> this person has the same stuff I have. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, c completely. And you find, you go and you find an answer for one person you're working with. And then suddenly mm -hmm. three more people show up with that same ailment that you just found a solution for because you had to think outside of your normal box of tools in order to solve that problem. And then three more people that next week who don't even know that you have the answer for it show up with the same issue. And so then you're, uh, you know, up and running and knowing things that you didn't know. And yeah, it does. It is also very self-reflective, especially, you know, like all of us who know a lot of stuff, sometimes we don't always practice every single thing we preach. And then when you're working with people, it really helps to keep you more in line with what you know is the right way to be living as well. So it's all uh, keeping yourself, you know, 
it, it goes back to what you said about responsibility, right? And so, uh, you know, when you're working in something, you know, it's, it, it also helps keep you sort of balanced and in line with yourself because you have to show up in that condition. So it's good. So to kind of recap, I would say number one, uh, start doing some meditations, balancing, you know, meditate, grounding. I think a lot of mm -hmm. people know grounding because I think next year is going to be, you could call it change, but you, some people are going to see it as chaos, right? Yeah. So you need to be as balanced as possible and so-called non-reactive in the positive sense to be that eye in the storm. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people that are so-called normies are going to freak out. Mm -hmm. so for your friends and family, you could be that island of stability that uh, brings that calm and reassurance. Mm -hmm. uh, start using, you know, the energy tools, whether it's tensor rings, uh, pyramids and so forth. And then, you know, also, like I said, even though people don't like change, but change, but change represents an opportunity too. Mm -hmm. So it's both. It's going to be destruction, but <laughs> what comes out of the ashes, but like a Phoenix, right? So yeah. it's going to be both. Change, change, change can be difficult, uncomfortable and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, I think it really always is a good thing. Um, it pushes people to, find solutions and innovate and, and uh, step outside of themselves for answers and talk to people and look inside themselves for answers and, you know, all sorts of things that, you know, we have, there's people that are very uh, extroverted naturally. And sometimes a big change causes them to turn inward and look at themselves a little bit more. You know, that's the case for me. Like I'm always been very socially extroverted and I went through a particularly difficult time in my life and I learned to really look inside. And then there's other people who are very introverted and in order to, solve whatever problem may come to them through change they have to learn to step out and a ask other people for help or interact with other people in a different way and create community so ultimately i think change it's really good to stretch it's really good to expand your awareness your possibilities all of that kind of stuff yeah and the the other thing too is the more intuitive you are mm -hmm. the ai can't do that no <laughs> so and also you know the average person uh, they're looking at the above board choices, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, that we have something extra that tells us do this, don't do that. Yep. And, and, you know, in the, the, the not ancient times, but say like in the old West or the native Americans, right. People that are trackers, they could say, Oh, the, the animals, the herds going here. Yeah. What if you have, let, let's say in the, you know, the, the mind of the, the preppers, right? The grid goes down, you don't have GPS, you don't have the internet anymore, but people that are intuitive, they can just say, you know what? There's a choice. There's a fork in the road. We can go East or West. And they said, we're going to go West. Yeah. And you'll, you will survive because if you have that, the so-called like higher self connection, yeah. that, that God connection, you really can't go wrong. Everybody, ha especially, I know, Emily, you're a cancer sign. Mm -hmm. Gut reaction. Yeah. You follow that. Yeah, the, the, you, even people that you meet, you're like, oh, I like this person. And you might feel like, I don't know why, but there's, there's something that something. Gives, me, gives me a ooh, vibe, right? Mm -hmm. Almost always, if you go with your initial reaction, that's the right one, right? Yep. I, I, I've rarely, if ever, gone wrong when following my gut. You know, when I question it or when I let my intellect override it because I want something else to be true or whatever, that's usually when you find yourself in a world of shit. <laughs> so. Well, the other thing is, I think uh, a lot of quote unquote normies, SJWs, even actually people on the right were more traditionally reactionary than people on the left. Yeah. It's just everything is inverted now. So now people on the left are more reactionary. Yeah. But people in general, they have this idea that when something chaos is happening or, or something unexpected is happening, that you, bet, you, bet you have to do something, you have to react. And that's not always the answer. Being able to sit still and go, you know what? I don't, I don't need to leave my house. I'm gonna stay right here. You know what I mean? Like that's the first thing people do when they think something's wrong is they feel like they have to like run for the hills or something like that, right? Then you leave your house and you have squatters. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, well, Sometimes the... knowing when to sit and just stay and be calm and cool and wait it out. That, I mean, be able to have the, presence of mind and the patience to do that also sometimes is a huge bonus. Well, well the problem with uh, going off of pure emotion mm -hmm. is you, you can be manipulated very easily. Yeah. Cause it's not based on logic. It's nope. about how you feel. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, like they say, the left has no brain and the right has no heart. Yeah. You, you kind of need to have a little <laughs> bit of both. Yeah. Know? So, yeah. Yeah. All right. We're wrapping up the first hour here. Misaki, tell people where they can find you for readings, your tools, follow your work. Well, my website is akaida.com. And I'm also on the Patreon, Pyramid Power, uh, page, uh, patreon.com, uh, Pyramid Power. You can find me there. And if you want to look at, because I don't post all the news. I, sometimes I just have a one-off items, right? If you want to check out some of my pyramids, I have a lot of photos on Instagram. It's uh, Ma- Masaki. It's M-A-S-A-K-I underscore one. It's uh, O-N-E. You can see some of the, you know, the pyramids yeah. I'm making every week. So. He has some really cool ones, guys. Like some of them look like ancient future technology with, I don't know, and with lifesavers in the middle. <laughs> All right, guys. So that wraps up the first hour. Uh, you can follow us at uh, 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 patreon.com forward slash off planet media. You can get the second hour of the show over there and uh, see you on the other side. We're going to talk about the metaphysics of pyramids, big and small, and probably some other stuff. We'll see. All right. This is Off Planet Radio. 